Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for coming and, and joining us here in Austin um, today and kind of taking, t using your Labor Day for, for hanging out with a bunch of other uh, Django folk. Um, so yeah, so I um, work at the Texas Tribune, which is a, uh, start advancing my slides, um, news outlet here based out of Austin, Texas. Um, we cover uh, state level politics and policy. Um, so we're, we're really interested in anything that's going on at that big pink building just down the road. Um, we, um, I'll be explaining in just a second what, what news apps means and kind of the bigger picture of the uh, Texas Tribune and, and how our um, kind of technology groups are organized. Um, but just to touch a little bit on the Tribune itself, um, we were founded in 2009, um, so still relatively young as far as news organizations go. Um, we launched um, on election night um, in November of 2009. Um, and uh, we were kind of we were founded as intentionally as a as a nonprofit, um, and that was that you know is funded through um, memberships. So it's a little bit of the kind of PBS and um, NPR model. Um, we have foundation support. We have um, events that we host that we charge admissions for. Um, the Texas Tribune Festival, um, for example, is one that's that's coming up here in um, October. Looking at Tribune people back there, yes, October. Um, that is actually here um, at the uh, UT campus and the ATT Conference Center. So um, if you're around, you should come check it out. Um, uh, we have the uh, largest state house news bureau in the United States. So that means that we have more people who are covering state politics um, than any other organization um, in the U.S., uh, which has been was one of our initial kind of claims to fame and one of our kind of goals when we were founded was to um, fill in the gap that we saw was um, kind of left open as, as a lot of the other, other news bureaus kind of were, were, you know, figuring out where everyone was going. Um, uh, good news is, is a lot of these, these other organizations have definitely um, rebuilt a lot of that team. So um, good news for Texas and good news for um, state coverage. Um, if, you, if you've never heard of the Texas Tribune, or um, just maybe you may know a couple of these things, but um, we have a, kind of a, a few different projects that, we've, that, that we tend to be known for. Um, the Salaries Explorer, um, which is one I'll touch on a little bit later, um, is our, uh, one of our kind of biggest traffic draws and one of our biggest um, actual data applications that we have. Um, currently has more than 350,000 state employees within it um, and from more than 50 different agencies in the state. Um, this is something that we're constantly updating, constantly um, adding new agencies and refreshing the data in. Um, the, the kind of goal or purpose of this project has always been to um, kind of show um, the citizens of Texas where, you know, where their tax dollars are going. Um, you know, it's, it's, been, it's always been kind of a... Um, you know, one of our kind of bread and butter um, experiences that we've always had at the Tribune and has kind of carried it um, through, um, I think even, I think it was 2010 actually is when, we, when, that, when the original version of this came out. Um, um, and this is one of our, um, again, I'll touch on it a little bit later, but this is actually one of our Django apps that I'll be talking about um, in a couple minutes. Um, the Prisoners Explorer, um, same kind of idea. Um, we, we have uh, data that we collect um, from the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, um, which has, you know, has this big database of everyone that's in the, currently in the state prison system. Um, and we've taken that data, we've cleaned it up, we present it based on kind of crime breakdown by housing, you know, by the um, unit that they're located in. Um, this is updated month by month. Um, so as people leave the system, they get removed from a wrap as well. Um, but the kind of goal of this was originally to present, you know, make this something that was a lot more user friendly than what the state currently had um, and still has. It's, it's very, very kludgy. Um, it's more kind of just a search box and, and hopefully you get lucky finding, you know, looking for someone that you want. Um, so this is kind of indicative of a lot of, of, of the, the work that we do at the Tribune is, is taking these large data sets, these large um, state government produced data sets and turning them into things that are um, more consumable and, and more user friendly. Um, one of the Tribune's kind of 
main tenants has, has always been, um, you know, and it's kind of a, you know, a basic news journalism tenant um, is, is just kind of serving as like the translators of, of kind of the wonkiness and, and turning it into something that um, the people of Texas can use and, and, and understand. Um, and, and our work with, with data is, is a big part of that. Um, our other, one of our other, um, this is not necessarily a data project, but definitely one of our um, other uh, kind of claims to fame was, was our uh, coverage of the um, abortion filibuster here um, in Austin back in 2013. Um, this was our last legislative session. Um, just, it was almost by stroke of luck that we happened to be, um, that session had got a, a agreement with the state to stream, to live stream the House and Senate chambers. Um, and uh, we, we, you know, they've, they've always had the ability for, to do this, but it was a horrible, horrible real player powered monstrosity back in the um, one of the back rooms of, of the Capitol. Um, and we 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 had got to organize, kind of organized with them to uh, get it turned into something that could actually be on YouTube and be streamed to YouTube, which really opened up the um, audience and a bit in just the, the ability for people to actually see this stream. Um, and again, just, just kind of just so happened to be that that was a, a very good year to, to ha have, have that live feed and have that live look into um, what was going on in the House and Senate. Um, that was a very, very long night. Um, but, uh, you know, we've, we, this, this was kind of our push us into doing something very similar this year as well. Um, and, and really kind of changed the, the dynamic there that, that it's, it's now really under, expected and, and, and understood that this is something that you know, people will be able to watch all across the state. Um, so, so today, kind of what, we're, what, I'm, what I'm hoping to kind of get uh, to kind of tell everyone about is um, like as, as a news organization um, and as a, as a pretty small one, um, like, how do we kind of go into our decision making about when and when not to use Django for our projects? Um, and, and when we, if we do decide to use it, like, what, what goes into making those decisions in terms of how we're going to architect it and how we're going to um, choose what components are part of it and approach the deadlines and kind of turn around for that? Um, how we make that, that small team work in this capacity, and I'll be kind of explaining the dynamic of that team here just in a sec. Um, and then I'm just gonna talk about the, a couple of these projects, the salaries database will be one of them, um, that I think are just kind of good representations of uh, the processes that we, we took and how we went from um, you know, starting, with, starting with kind of day one uh, brainstorm meeting and got to final product. Um, and of course, we'll be saving some time for questions at the end, so. Um, and as I'll just kind of add this too, if, if there's like, I'm, as I'll explain in a sec, I'm, there's a news apps team and there's a platform team. So if there's very technical questions I may not be able to address, there are three of them right back there. So, if they, so do not feel afraid to ask those questions because I'm sure one of us will be able to answer it. Um, so news apps, what, what, what does that even mean? Um, so it was actually right at the end of last session, um, the 2013 session, that we decided that um, kind of the arrangement we had before is that we had a technology team that was responsible for a whole lot and still are and do a great job, um, but was getting spread very thin by kind of the editorial demands, but also the demands of the business side, the marketing side, membership. Um, and kind of looking at how the rest of the industry was going, where they were kind of making these dedicated teams to producing editorial products, um, we knew that this was something that we also needed to do. Um, so uh, Becca Aronson, who is one of my um, coworkers and one of the co-leads of the News Apps team, I, um, and uh, Travis Weisgood, who is also here, um, who was with us at the time, we, we kind of split off and, and kind of deemed ourselves the News Apps team. Um, and our job was to be kind of dedicated to what, you know, anything that editorial needed, plus um, these kind of more editorial focused um, data projects like salaries, prisons, and, and other ones that came up. Um, so we do still have um, our kind of tech platform team. Um, this is their, our, the gang back there. Um, they're responsible for building and maintaining our content management system. Um, and they're the ones that work very closely with marketing, membership, and business um, to kind of get their needs done. They've been working 
tirelessly on the um, Tribune Festival um, side and, and launch. Um, and um, also are, are responsible for keeping the ship afloat. Um, they're, they're the ones that, that keep an eye out on deployments, um, what we've, um, and work closely with news apps to kind of, if, as, we, as we get to deployment phases with our projects, um, we'd often um, turn to platform, often specifically Daniel back there, um, to, to make those things happen. Um, and I apologize for what's, what's next year. I just, I, I always love how every conference, every talk that talks about Docker, which I'm gonna briefly mention it, has to have, has to have a ship container thing. So I, I wanted to continue. I didn't want to break that, that thread. So um, there's been a lot of great ship container art that's come out of this product. Um, so news apps. So we are, are actually on the editorial team. So we are, we are technologists that are embedded with the reporters, um, with the multimedia team, with the art department, um, to do um, development based around that. Um, I, you know, this would be a good point where I kind of stress, like we're sitting in the same room as the reporters, we're all together. Um, that's also true for the tech team. So um, the, the Tribune, we've, we've always tried to really keep those walls, um, or take those walls down and not let it be a very much kind of technology is over here and news people are over here. We're all kind of working toward the same goal. Um, we're always in conversation, always talking. Um, so, but we're, we're the team that's, that's kind of dedicated to doing the development work for anything that comes up for editorial. Um, depending on the time of year, depending on the kind of scope of the projects, we, we kind of morph into different kind of, um, kind of arrangements. Um, we also work on graphics that you'll see running in our stories. We build interactives. Um, we do the data explorers again, like salaries and prisons, um, and also work on the kind of the big, bigger series features that, uh, you know, are more kind of text or multimedia based, but we're kind of the web development team that, that puts those together. Um, and we also are responsible for working on um, data reporting, which is, which, which is uh, definitely kind of Becca and I's background. Um, we've, we kind of came from being more kind of data reporters for the newsroom and, and transitioned into doing more development. Um, but we still do that stuff as well. So as data, data sets come in, the reporters need help with um, kind of parsing through a bigger data set or just making sense of it, um, that still kind of falls under our um, uh, tent. Um, just to kind of give, highlight a couple of them, and I'll, these, these links are all be included at the end just to kind of give a list of things to, to kind of touch through, but just examples of, of some of the things that we've, you know, we're kind of, we focus on. Um, Faces of Death Row, for example, was our project that looked at the, um, the kind of looked at everyone who is currently on death row in the state of Texas, um, which is, is uh, I wish I would have looked up the kind of the stats on that, but um, at the time, this is an older photo, and I could, of course cut off the number, um, but more than 200 people are on, our, on death row in Texas. Um, and we, we went through the painstaking process of getting um, the mug shots for, for all those individuals. Um, which was, was, was something that the uh, state agency was not, not at, at first really, really uh, wanting to release. Um, but, you know, we wanted to, to present um, this, this large group of people that, um, that are just kind of been, some people more than 40 years have been just kind of in this system um, and, 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 you know, give, kind of resurface that conversation. Um, kind of more on the interactive side, um, this top right here is our at, kind of just a snapshot of our reservoirs explorer. Um, this is our kind of just live tracking of the state of the um, reservoirs in Texas. Um, this is something that we, um, not Django, but this is something that we've, we've had for three, four years now. Um, and we every day get uh, fresh data that's, that is keeping track of the state of every reservoir in Texas. Um, and this is one of our kind of more wonky but popular um, apps that a lot of kind of our audience that's interested in water issues um, will, will very, very quickly tell me whenever it's out of date. Um, so we have a small but passionate audience for that. Um, and the Texas Legislative Guide, which is at the bottom right, which I'll touch on again in just a little bit, um, was our, the, our big project at the beginning of this year to um, kind of was a combination of data and editorial um, to, to uh, 
kind of approach the coverage of the legislative session a little bit differently. Um, so one thing I wanted to, to kind of touch on was this kind of leaving the, the breakout, breakout of the teams part. Um, there's another part of the reason that we have kind of the explicit platform team and news apps team is there's this, this formal, informal kind of line in the sand for editorial um, that we, you know, we intentionally keep it that way. Um, and while we've, we all like everyone in, our, in the organization and we all get along great, it's, it's definitely kind of meant to be a, um, you know, a separate, you know, there's a reason why news apps doesn't do membership and doesn't do business. Um, you know, it's, 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 you know, we, we feel better about knowing that, that the teams that are dedicated to editorial don't touch any of that stuff. Um, and that's, that's been kind of our, our, another big part of breaking out um, the two teams into separate kind of groups because we wanted to you know, be able to maintain that. And of course, doesn't mean we don't still, you know, if technology things come up that, you know, we want that platform needs help with, we'll help with. Um, but we definitely kind of try to stay as far, you know, as much as we can away from the content aspect of that. Um, so, um, as you know, being a talk at DjangoCon, it'd be assumption that we're we're using Django all the time, um, but but no, not actually. Uh, we're we very much um, you know we have just to, I just went and found a bunch of random things. We actually do use all of these though: Flask, Middleman, Node. Um, you know, we always want to make sure that we're approaching everything with the right tool. Um, it is it is if an app can be a static app and has no database has no app server it is a fantastic good day and I will I will fight for every every project that can be that way um, because it cuts maintenance down to practically nothing I'm just hoping that s3 doesn't go down um, so because the team is so small you know this is this is really important that we don't let everything kind of blossom into a big um, Django or big, just any like database driven project because we, there's only so much time that we have. And we're also kind of on the hook for maintaining all of these pre, you know, the salaries, prisons, all these other apps that um, don't really have an end. Like they will, they will continue in perpetuity until I guess the Tribune is no more, which um, is hopefully not anytime soon. Um, and we you know we want to try to save the bigger tools, the heavier lifting for the projects that are, that you know, more suited for that. Um, so of course it kind of pivots into the question of why are we doing Django at all? Um, I think Rails is okay, it's fine. Um, Flask is, is definitely simple and you, you know, if we need to just kind of have something that's sitting in front of a endpoint, that's great. Um, and static gen site generators have just exploded in the past couple years and it's just kind of continuing down that path. Um, there are some news organizations that will have committed to only doing things that way um, and I, I think that that's, that's, that can be a challenge if you're just really refusing to ever touch a, a server or a database, but um, it's certainly possible. Um, but for us, you know, it's, it's the, the batteries that are included. The, that Django just makes it really easy for us to, to turn projects very quick or at minimum explore a project very quick. Um, you know, they're very obvious one, um, Django admin. Um, we do, you know, I, I, I do think that we've, in some of our situations, we've, we've leaned on the admin a little too much, but, um, but for internal projects, it's been fantastic because you get that basic kind of CRUD set up for free. Um, we've been able to, to kind of do, you know, spin up an app really quick just for data entry, um, just for working with reporters um, that have, you know, something that we know we can't scrape, something that we can't do, um, just kind of process through as like a spreadsheet, um, but we want to you know ensure that we have kind of the validation um, in place for every step of that that process. Um, um, often, you know, almost it's if there's a very good chance that if we ever are touching Django, we are using GeoDjango and PostJS in some capacity. Um, almost it, pretty much anything we've we've done um, has this kind of just GIS element to it. So. Um, often we're looking at things at the county level, at the city level, at the um, comparing, you know, the state totals to local totals. Um, and, you know, the real power uh, of, of this combination is that we, we, have to, we get to spend a lot less time thinking about how to manage that data, how to turn it into something usable. Um, we can just load it, model out, load it, and go. Um, and that's, that's, that's definitely kind of a, a good um, 
this cuts out a lot of that, that very distracting figuring out how to organize things. Um, many of our um, kind of, we have, so we kind of have two different kind of kits that we have built out. We have our, our Django powered kind of templating that are set up that's meant for, you know, your more traditional um, apps where you have the database and you're loading all the data there and then generating pages from that. Um, but we also use um, kind of our version of our static site generator, which is written in Node, um, that uses um, a templating language called Nunjux, which is almost identical to Jinja 2. Um, it's actually kind of crazy how, how they've, how it's just, it emulates it so closely. Um, but the advantage is that, you know, they're between the Django template language and Jinja 2, there's not, you know, there are differences, but because they're similar enough, you know, we're able to get designers and other developers to really kind of, when they're needing to build pages, the, the mental jump is not very far. Um, you know, we've, there's, it's, they can kind of go from working on a static app and looping through data and, you know, building lists and then come to a Django project and do the very same thing. Um, and it's, it's not, not a big, like, loss of time for them to figure out the differences between the two. Um, certainly comes up, but um, it's great for, for just having that, that breakout. Um, uh, for me, one of the best things is just being able to do the data modeling, and it's probably my, my weird favorite part of doing anything in Django, um, is building out the models, because that's, I, I, it feels like Legos almost to me for some reason. Um, but you know it, it's great because we can we can use this again. It's all, all those built-ins, all those um, kind of affordances that you can get from from just you know modeling out what what the data is going to look like. All the validators, all the forms get come along with it, um, and then using those forms and validators for the loading of government data. Um, so you know we have you know we know you know we get we can use the built-in Django kind of logging systems to to kind of throw up that flag and say, hey, there's something funny here. This date doesn't have, there's only three characters in the year. You know, there's examples like that, that, um, you know, when we, you know, doing a lot of things kind of with Excel, sometimes we don't know, we wouldn't always necessarily come across those sort of things. It was, it was very easy for it just to kind of, kind of pass through and, and not notice that something was wrong. Um, and because it's so easy to spin these up and so easy to, um, Kind of build out those 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 kind of structures for this this you know we can we can we know, you know it's worth that extra kind of like hour to build out something um, just so we get all the extra um, additions um, and of course Django being um, you know birthed out of a you know news organization we've um, you know we have a great community that that we can work with and interact with you know if there's challenges or if there's um, you know, just, just watching what everyone else is doing. And I, I put this up here just because if, if anyone knows much about the kind of the news layout or kind of landscape in terms of platforms and things that, that, that New York Times has always been very traditionally Rails. They use everything. I mean, they have, there's Go back there and everything. But um, I was just very excited to see that, that Django is, is starting to make its way in. Um, so hats off to you, Jeremy Bowers. Um, so for how we kind of, we, we approach um, our projects, um, you know, we, we, we know that often that our timelines are going to be very, very tight. Um, it's, it's very rare that, um, there's one exception which I'll get to, but we, there's very rare that we have kind of a long like year, six month kind of span that we're gonna get to really work on a project, take the time, tweak it, push back for a month. Um, certainly happens, but often, you know, there's all these other kind of elements that go into it, um, or it's just something that we need out quick. Um, if, if a project is going to not exist forever, um, like one of the, you know, one of the major data apps, um, they must have a sunset plan. We have to have a process for um, eventually turning that server off. Um, because we've, as, as I think we've seen a lot, we, even we've experienced and we've seen in a lot of other organiza news organizations that, you know, the, the ease of building it is exciting and, and you get it up and it's running and everyone's excited. Um, but then eventually, you know, some, you know, if it's not something that's, that's top of mind being updated on a regular basis, someone's going to forget about it. Um, and, you know, worst case scenario, it goes down. Um, other case is it's just bleeding money. Um, and you're not, you know, no one's, no one's really noticing that. 
So, um, you know, we always want to be sure that we have a plan for kind of turning off the servers, turn off the database, and letting it continue to exist in just kind of a frozen state. Um, so the first of the projects I was going to just was going to touch on was the um, disappearing Rio Grande. So we, um, and I'll actually, well, because I can't slip, click on that. But um, so this project was um, one that was pitched to us by a freelance reporter um, named Colin McDonald. Um, he uh, used to work at the San Antonio Express News um, and was was had been itching to find some pathway to um, traveling all the way down the Rio Grande River. Um, and he wanted a place to publish this. He wanted a place that he could kind of maintain kind of a running blog of what his experience was. Um, he was going to have um, a, an award-winning photographer traveling with him. Um, and he would already had set up a Kickstarter and was, was getting that funded and reached out to us and said, hey, do you want to be the partner on this? Um, and when he was at the Express News, he actually... Um, kayaked all the way across the um, Texas coast, like went from bottom to the Louisiana side. Um, he hiked across Big Bend in like 12 days. Um, so the credentials certainly checked out. He, this, he was very serious about um, taking, um, starting all the way up in Colorado and coming all the way to the Gulf. Um, so this was a project that kind of, you know, regrettably kind of snuck up on us because we've, we, we, um, I kind of went back and forth about the feasibility of getting it, um, you know, being the partner and, and how that was going to work. Um, this was kind of in that weird little void when we were um, kind of the post transition and figuring out how we were going to kind of own this project. Um, so, but, you know, we knew that this, this was something that was going to rise to the level of being a Django powered project. Um, so for the, you know, what we needed to have is that we needed a way to, um, you know, it was actually very cool was that Colin was going to do a lot of data collection as he was traveling down the river. Um, he was um, taking water measurements every night. So every, every they, were, they were camping along the river when they were in places that they were allowed to, to camp on or got permission from the private owner, um, property owners. Um, and at every point, he was doing a water measurement to kind of test what the state of the river was at that time um, and at that location. So when we were building this out, we had to build something that was that supported, um, that that was easy for him to to get that data into the system, um, and there was an extra level of you know he was going to be often, you know, sleeping in a tent and was not necessarily always going to have a good enough connection to just be sitting there, um, you know, typing numbers into the Django admin. Um, so you know it had to be something that he could email off and get. Um, if, if, if someone to kind of help him, you know, get all that information in. Um, what was probably, to me, the coolest part of, of his um, kind of trip was that he had this little, little clicker, essentially, that was a, a G, that sent out a kind of ping up to a satellite that said, this is where I'm at. This is my lat long right now. Um, and we were, we were able to work with the kind of creators of that system to get access to their API um, and get that feed. So like as every time he hit a point, we would know within, we were checking it probably like every 10, 15 minutes. Um, we would know within 10, 15 minutes exactly where he was at. Um, and we're using that data to kind of build out these, um, these kind of bigger interactive maps that, that, that showed like where he traveled there during that day um, and kind of collected into this big, like bigger map that was looking at what, um, you know, his whole kind of trajectory as he traveled down the river. Uh, we also had to kind of do the media uploads, build sortable galleries, because again, this you, you know didn't want to waste this fantastic photographer that was traveling with him. Um, and probably one of the biggest things, and this 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 will you know there's I, the one kind of product or like app suggestion I will make and and advocate for was um, uh, white noise, which has been one of our kind of you know great great tool to have for. Um, for these quicker apps when we don't have to worry about, you know, building out um, static file service for everything, even though it, you know, it's going to list exist for two weeks. Um, white noise um, wraps that up into um, when Django's uh, served. So it provides um, that, 
kind of same functionality, but it's built wrapped in. Um, it was originally kind of, or not, probably not originally, but it's been, was, is it always kind of pitched as a good partner with like Heroku um, because you get that kind of, you don't have to set up all the separate hosting for the static files. Um, but for our purposes, it's been great because again, it's so simple and straightforward, um, you know, especially if an app, again, it's only gonna exist for a couple weeks or a month. Um, it's not ever gonna really have the load that we know we need to like build out this kind of multi redundancy s setup. Um, so this, this is one of the stars of every, every app these days, um, but wanted to just kind of plug it there real quick. The Texas Legislative Guide, which I showed off, showed just a, the picture of a little bit earlier, um, was again, like was our most recent kind of bigger Django project. Um, and, and our approach was that we've, we've uh, had covered a couple sessions and usually we, you know, we had our standard stories and coverage that was going along with that and we, <laughs> had built out in the past um, build trackers effectively. So using the state's data to, um, to, to kind of like have our own f interface on the state's, kind of the state of the bills um, uh, in session, um, which worked and, and was good. And it was definitely a much more enjoyable kind of way to interact with that bill data. Um, but, but when we were kind of approaching this, 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 this way of this new session, we, you know, we wanted to try to figure out a way to do that differently. Um, because we kind of had approached, you know, we felt like we had approached a lot of those previous sessions, like, okay, bill tracker, good, we're done. Um, but, but for me, and this was kind of a personal kind of challenge I had with that, was that, you know, we often in stories would talk about these bill numbers. It would become SB20. Um, and then every time a reporter wrote about it, it would be SB20. Um, but if you came into this, the session, you know, a month or two in, that bill number means nothing to you. You know, there's there's no, there's there's you know, it's it's dis it, it's a, not attached to the actual issue. Like you know, for some people, it you know rises to that level that they recognize what that is. But if you're not someone who's following this day to day, um, that that bill number you know could potentially you know you have to go f hunt and figure out what that actually means. Um, and also, as you know, the challenge in Texas is that issues on bills just because a bill dies doesn't necessarily mean that its issue went away. It can pop back up on an amendment that you know, they found a thread of kind of connection to, um, and then the very same language could end up somewhere else, but now the bill number's different. Um, so we wanted to approach it, you know, again, less, less about the bill number, more about the actual issues that, we were, that, that were being covered. Um, and we really wanted to let the reporters be content experts that they are, that, that, that it, you know, it was less about kind of trying to aggregate all this data into one place that someone can just go look at, but giving a platform to the reporters to actually kind of maintain this evergreen look at what each one of these issues were, you know, were going through. So, um, so like um, campus carry, for example, like, you know, we, you know, we were covering that very, you know, constantly, but, you know, the, the language and the bill that was doing that kept moving, it kept traveling. Um, but, you know, instead of us making it about that bill number and then having to explain every time that it changed, um, you know, we instead just let it be this kind of block of text that the reporter was curating um, and building kind of this list of stories that they had been writing about it and let that be what informs, um, you know, what's happening with that issue versus um, just kind of having to try to draw all these lines in every single story in like three paragraphs at the beginning of like, it used to be here and now it's here. Um, and also, we really wanted this to, to be something that had a, a designated end. You know, we wanted this to be something that, um, that, that, that was purposely dedicated to being, you know, a resource at the end of the day. So, like, at, so one session ended, um, it would be kind of like frozen and, and be a source that you can go to and see, okay, what happened in this session? What, what happened with this issue that I was following. You know, we, we rewrote all of the kind of summary text to be kind of conclusions to, to, those, to those things. Um, let's see, I have about one minute left. Um, so just to touch on quick, Government Excelis Explorer, um, this has been um, one of the oldest apps that we have um, back to 20, I'm guessing 2010 actually. There's been variations of it that have existed, so it's, it's kind of actually a question mark when, it, for, when you would like consider it technically um, there. Um, but this is the, our one that we are constantly updating and maintaining. Um, 
going to give a proper shout out to Travis Westgood and Dan Hill, who, who did a bulk of kind of the front work on it. Um, Dan and I uh, were the ones who kind of closed it out. Um, but um, a big part of, of what we were kind of going for with this um, is, is really wanting to abstract out the um, kind of the data elements of it and the presentation elements of it, which is actually um, two separate Django apps that we, we built for this purpose. Um, and the goal there was to, you know, knowingly like approaching it as, you know, there's a, there's a front end kind of element of it, the user facing, reader facing, but also wanting to be able to use that data um, internally and have kind of a, the data app in this case um, that could be repurposed for anything that we wanted to hook it into um, and not necessarily have it have to travel with the front end elements of that. Um, and I can't get that link going, but I'm running out of time anyways. So, um, but again, just to, just to touch on what the self-documenting, so um, the repo, and actually all the repos for all these projects I've talked about are actually um, open source and on, on our GitHub. Um, but you know, we wanted to make sure that um, like there's code that's written to clean up every single data set that goes into the salaries app. Um, and kind of a byproduct of it being a public repo is that we wanted it to be both self-documenting but also transparent so people can see kind of how we walk through um, cleaning up each agency's data set and kind of normalizing it to, to fit in the kind of the modeling that we had done. Um, and next on our agenda is, is redoing our public schools app, if anyone's has seen that, um, which is kind of looking at the, um, looking at data for every public uh, school and district in the state of Texas and letting people find their, um, find their school and see where it ranks in relation to schools near it and with the state. Um, I was actually hoping to show some of that here today, but we've, we, I was very, I was way too optimistic about both time and also how far we would get along working on that. So um, I will just ask everyone to keep an eye out for it in the coming next couple of months. Um, so I'm actually gonna, fortunately at the end here, so um, let anyone ask questions if they'd like. Um, this, we'll be making this presentation um, public and sharing it, but these are links to all the GitHub projects and um, things that I mentioned um, during this, and thank you. Thank you, Ryan. It uh, looks like we have two or three minutes for questions. Uh, I have one, actually. Yeah. Since you've been working with all these government agencies over the last few years, have you noticed any like, change in behavior on their side? Or are they more kind of aware of like, exporting data? Have you noticed, like, are they getting better at you know, being more transparent and making data more available to the public? Yeah, it's um, a great question. Uh, yes and no. Um, it, 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 so, I think that you know our best example of this is certainly with the salaries app, um, which we've we went through a lot of, and I was kind of fortunate to be part of a lot of those conversations. But you know, we, we kind of when we first started that, we we interacted with a lot of agencies agencies that just said no, like we don't that that's not a thing we want to give you. They actually can't do that as we as we found that's that's that is public data, but um, and you know it, it's kind of like you know we it's. I'm trying to think of the best analogy for it is you know we we've done the motions enough that you know they kind of understand you know okay look let's don't don't play the game of of oh well that's going to be hard because we've already fought that battle and here's a list of everyone we fought that battle with and you're you're wasting your time um, and here's an AG opinion that we've won that battle um, so you know like when we first were going through a lot of these you know we would get like like oh well we have a mainframe. And in, in the state of Texas, you actually can charge a lot of money for, for getting open records data out of a mainframe. It's, it's there because you have to reserve time. Um, and I believe it was, I wanna say it was UT Dallas. I'm not 100% on that. Um, actually, it wasn't them, but it was another agency that we like, essentially asked, we got to the point of where like, prove that you actually have a mainframe before you charge us you know, $800. And it comes, it turned out they did not have one. <laughs> and did not know that they didn't have one, which was the most amazing part of that. Um, they just, it was just a charge that they were, this knew that they could make, and um, no one had ever really pushed them on it. So a lot of the agencies that we you know, interact with now, like the prisoner database, for example, um, that's an arrange, like we, that we've already like arranged that. Like they know we can get it, you know, they do charges for it, we pay, it's, it's, it's a transaction that's, that's understood. Um, in general, kind of across the state, I mean, I think that 
Um, I think that, you know, that this is becoming, and it's not just in Texas, like it's becoming more of a thing. It's more, you know, people are asking for this data, not just even in, in news outlets. Um, and a lot of places that we've interacted with over the years that used to just, you know, it kind of flow, if, if you don't assign someone as your open records person, it ends up just being like the head of the agency. Um, and a lot of these organizations now have dedicated people, dedicated teams to fulfilling them. Um, so um, again, you know, we're fortunate that in Texas, and this is true in Florida too, um, we actually have a pretty generous open records law. Um, it's, it's a lot of kind of, no one wants to be, you know, the best way to kind of get back at other people is make things more open um, when you're in politics, which is fantastic for journalism. Um, and we've definitely taken advantage of that. <laughs> um, so I, I think, yeah, we've, you know, there's, there's certainly still humps, but um, I, I think it's, it's, it's become a thing that where we, we even have agencies reaching out to us to kind of like, hey, we want to make this available. How can we do this better? So, you know, at the end goal, they're wanting to save time and money. Um, we want to do that too. So it, it's, it's, it's um, you know, I would never say it's 100% there, but um, I definitely have seen improvement over the past couple of years. Well, thank you, Ryan. Thank you. <laughs>